everyone, I'm Casey Martin from Wine Country Woodworks, and this is going to be a really sweet video that I've been wanting to make for a long time on making a resin river table. Um, I wanted to mention if I sound a little congested and sick, it's because I am, so please excuse that. But this is some amazing box elder burl. Uh, I got these two slabs from organburls.com. Here's the Tyvek tape that I'm using to cover the bottom of the slab. So this is the bottom that we're looking at, and then we're going to flip that over in a second. I put the tape on both ends as well. We're going to end up putting some HDPE plastic, and I'll have a link in the video description for all of the things I use in this video if you're curious. Um, but it's basically a plastic that resin won't stick to that I'm going to end up clamping in a moment to the ends. But the tape is there to just, you know, act as as the first barrier because um, it's, it's obviously more malleable and can kind of get there. So there's the HDPE. I just used some scraps that I had left over from making other molds. And this video was made possible by Total Boat Epoxy. They sent me out this two to one resin so that I could do a sponsored video with them. So huge thank you to them. Uh, it worked really, really well. Uh, the one thing I did differently is you guys saw me just there using the pumps, uh, which is a great idea in theory by them. But since I'm doing such large pours, I ended up taking those out and I was going to do 50 ounces for this pour. So I did uh, about 24 to 25 in each of these smaller cups, and then I mixed it into the original one. And so that I didn't mess with the pumps because it was hard to know where I was, I just ended up using both of the, the cups that were filled with some epoxy. And the way I kind of figured this out uh, was by using a volume calculator of how much I wanted to use that powder that I just showed you guys was some sky blue powder by Caster's Choice. I'll also have a link in the video description. They were kind enough to send me out some to use for a video and also to give away. And if you're watching this uh, within a few weeks of this video being posted, you can check out my 10k giveaway. It'll be in the top right corner where I'm giving away a ton of their powders. Um, one thing that is really important with this resin um, that I didn't strictly adhere to is that they recommend you only pour layers of a quarter inch at a time. Now I poured a half inch um, pretty much every time. Uh, the final coat was a little less and I had no problems with it. Obviously that's not what they recommend, but it did work for me. Uh, being in California, the temperature throughout the whole time was anywhere from 60 to 72, 73 or so, uh, maybe mid to, to high 50s uh, during the night. but it's a great resin. I mean, I, I think they say a quarter inch, especially if you're doing clear stuff, because maybe there was micro bubbles in the middle, but it worked well for me. Uh, you guys can see this blue that I'm doing as a bottom coat, I elected to make a lot uh, darker than the next coats because I wanted no light to show through from the bottom. So this is the next coat. Uh, I made it a lot lighter, as I said, and I'm really, really starting to love how it's starting to come together. So at this point, I was ready for the final coat to get it completely level with the wood. And so I took my hot glue gun and kind of made a dam around all of it on the bottom right. And now the top uh, almost left side of the screen, uh, the table wasn't completely level when I poured. So there's a little bit of overflow. So I, I put the dam there as well. So it wouldn't fill up any more than necessary. And I, I shimmed the table. So it was perfectly level for this final pour. And this pour I did the most uh, clear as well, or the most light, however you want to phrase it. And the dam ended up working perfectly. I was really happy with how that worked. There's only one part on the dam that it kind of overflowed, but it wasn't uh, too big of a problem because if you can kind of see at, at where on the, the right end of the pour, I ended up just scraping it with a popsicle stick while it was still kind of wet. Next uh, was filling up the cracks you just saw me do and then trimming the ends of the table with my circular saw to get them nice and flush. Yeah. <laughs> 
And as you guys can see, I just used a, a scrap piece of plywood to act as a guide so I could get a nice parallel uh, cut on each side and perpendicular to the other sides of the table. I also trimmed up the, the long sides as well, but I didn't show that. So this was a very large learning experience for me. I started sanding this whole table and it was taking forever and I, I don't have the ability to uh, run this through a planer. It's not too big even for a 24 inch planer because it was about 30 inches. So I built a router flattening sled. There's a ton of great videos on it. I'll leave a link in the, the top right and also in the description on the video I watched on Making Mine, but it's super, super easy. And if you're ever flattening something um, or need something to be flattened that's too large for a planer, I would highly recommend this. It goes really, really fast for what you can do with it, and it's super easy to make. It m took me probably, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes to make the whole thing, and mine was pretty big too. It's a four by four um, jig, so it's also something that's reusable if you build it that way, so for future projects like this or others, I'm gonna be able to reuse it. After I had it completely flattened, I ended up using my belt sander. I had to go out and buy one because I didn't have one. And when I was using my orbital sander, it was just taking forever. Even with 60 grit, it just wasn't cutting it. Um, so I, I learned pretty quickly that this guy is very aggressive. And so I had to, to almost take <laughs> like a, a lot of caution with making sure I didn't take too much off. But it did a great job of taking off everything that I did need because the router jig works great but it does leave lines it's really really hard to have it not leave lines but after that it was ready to start uh, sanding with the orbital from starting pretty low about 120 uh, going all the way up to 220 and then all the way up to 2000 on uh, most of the wood but mainly the resin was what i really cared about getting pretty high up there and at that point Another learning experience. Uh, we're almost to the point of applying the finish, and here it is. I wanted to include all of the, not not necessarily mistakes I had, but all of the, the learning uh, process that I had in this. The, the first finish that I did was a polyurethane finish that I'm applying right now, and uh, I'm sure it's a great finish. It looks great. As you guys can see, it's really making the wood pop and the resin look really nice, and it was 100% uh, user error. Uh, even though I was using a foam brush, I kept getting brush strokes and um, I did like four or five coats because my plan was that I could try to sand it out after it was completely done. And that's what I'm doing right now. I, I was thinking I could flatten out all the brush strokes and all the imperfections. And then it, if it was thick enough, I could just still polish it uh, to a really high, high sheen and it would still look great. But I ended up breaking through in quite a few places doing this to get it flat. And so I figured I might as well just refinish it with something else. And so I used the same type of finish, but in a spray can form. And even though it's a gloss finish, it ended up coming out a little more satin and matte. And I think that's just because of the way the spray uh, finish is applied. Um, but I really, really love how it ended up turning out. And also I'm... Now that I'm completely done with the project, I'm very grateful about all of the learning experiences that I had in this project. And I definitely plan on learning how to properly apply one of those finishes in the future. And I'm, I'm sure it's not too easy. I just wanted to not take any chances on this one. So what you guys can see me doing right there is just hitting it with some 2000 grit sandpaper with a little foam pad to keep it nice and flat. And here is the finished project. I really hope you guys like it. Obviously, the whole project was uh, just making the, the tabletop. So uh, the legs that I use, I'll also leave a link in the description as well. Uh, they were pretty reasonable for how strong they are. You know, they're steel legs. I think it was 70 or $80. And here is the completely finished project. I really hope you guys like it. Really, uh, let me know down in the comment section what you guys thought. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm really excited to keep making more projects like this. I have a miniature uh, size project of cheese boards, Resin River cheese boards, coming up in the next week or so. So look forward to that. That's going to be a really cool video. I'll show you guys all how to replicate that yourself. And I really, <clears throat> excuse me, I really hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.